What's up? It's your boy Cartino here, and this is the truth behind the Malcolm and Eddie TV show. Um, you guys wanted to know what was going on. You guys made a donation, and for the rest of you guys, you can click the link in the description box, hit the stream lab up, and make a donation to the page. Or if you got the Cash App, you can hit me up at Carcino on the Cash App. And somebody made a very sizable donation, and they were asking about Malcolm and Eddie today. I'm like, why is Malcolm and Eddie such a big thing today? Like, what's going on with Malcolm and Eddie? So they wanted to know. And I said, well, I'll tell you. No big problem with me. I just watch the Golden State Warriors waste my time. So why not? <laughs> Now, Malcolm and Eddie was a show that ran for four years, ladies and gentlemen, four years. It was loved by a lot of people, and it was a surprise because they were like, Malcolm Jamal Warner is back? You know, because normally he was working behind the scenes, behind the character, I mean, behind the camera. He was doing producing and directing more than being on screen. And then when people saw him, they see him with the dreads and the braids and you know and it's like they're bringing this show together and the show is basically a Kansas City you know bar owner businessman sharing his apartment with his friend you know Eddie now when the deal was done they brought Malcolm Jamal Warner over he thought the UPN was going to try to incorporate him to change it to make, you know, to make it a better show as far as not being a stereotypical black TV show where they just go off satire so what they think black people like and what they do rather than, you know, showing them as, you know, human beings. So <laughs> So when this was done, he was like, I get there and it's an entirely different show, you know, than what we agreed upon and what the show was supposed to be. The show went from Malcolm and Eddie being responsible, you know, sensible people, businessmen, and writing the comedy in that fashion. It turned into a different type of show which was considered to be more you know more raunchy on the end with some comedy and certain you know certain comedy that was like pushing the envelope and it was coming more from the producers and the writers so the conflict of interest with Malcolm Jamal Warner had mainly was with the production and the studio see the studio had different ideas on what they think the show should really be and when you got different people on different pages you end up running into a scenario where things are not just going to work out now one of the main problems on this show was trish baker trish baker who was the producer of this show she also was one of the writers for this show, the main writer. Like, she came in and did the bulk of the series. And Trish Baker and Meg and all of these people who were involved, these people, like, Trish Baker wasn't really known as a writer. She's mostly a producer. They brought her over to write for this show. And what she was doing is she comes from Sabrina the Teen Witch. You know, it's like... you. You're having, she's bumping heads with everybody on this show because she's trying to write it as what she thinks black people are. And she has no identity with black people. So Eddie is really pissed off because she's trying to make Eddie be something that Eddie isn't, you know? And it's like, wait a minute. And then Malcolm and son, Eddie Griffin one going by gunpoint. Ain't no way in hell I'm saying that. I'm just saying you better go back in there and get your writing skills up. Or matter of fact, let me just come up with the lines that I would say in that situation. Have you ever been around black people? I mean, like real black people? Because no way in hell would a black man be saying these type of words. You understand what I'm saying to you? 
So he go talk to Malcolm. Malcolm, the show is called Malcolm and Eddie and not Eddie and Malcolm. So you need to be the one to say something to the studio. Come on, man. We, I don't need Theo. I need Malcolm. So <laughs> now when he does it that way, him and Eddie, he's like, Eddie, what you wanted to do and what this part you wrote, we can't do. Why not? Why we can't do it, Malcolm? Tell me why. It's funny, ain't it? That kind of funny is not the kind of funny you want to push it. So it was like Bill Cosby, Richard Pryor. <laughs> you know, two different styles of comedy and what was funny and what wasn't funny. And, you know, you don't have to be lewd or really cruelly insulting to be funny. And that's what Eddie did not want the show to, I mean, Malcolm didn't want the show to become. So him and Eddie had to find like a common ground. And that's why the show started to differ. You know, and Eddie Griffith was like, I'm basically writing the damn show because nobody's writing my dialogue no more. They just like, you know, what the hell with it. <laughs> Let Eddie write a couple of episodes. So Eddie actually got credit for writing like four episodes, you know, but he wrote like damn near all of them. <laughs> Cause his his dialogue was mostly it was like Eddie says something endearing. Eddie says something funny here. Oh, Eddie mentioned something about her hair being ghetto. What does being ghetto mean? <laughs> like Eddie was like, what do you mean like being ghetto? You know, it was these type of things that were going on a lot on the set. So it wasn't necessarily because people taking it like Eddie Griffin was fighting with Malcolm and that's why the show and y'all excusing a lot of these writers and producers that was on the show. This show had some of the most writers anybody has ever seen. I mean, for a television show, it's like about 30 writers for a show that only went four seasons. But one of the main problems of this show was Trish Baker. She had no idea about how a black comedy show should work because she has not had any familiarity with blacks. Instead of working with Malcolm and saying, you know what, Malcolm, let's sit down and try to make this show work. And everybody else just said, you know what, let's get the bag. <laughs> you know, like, let's not blow the show up. Let's do, we got a hit show. Let's continuously do the show, but let's try to imprint what we wanted. But more and more, they kept changing. Do your, uh, we got to make cuts here. We got to do that. Then Eddie got really pissed off when they tried to take his character down a direction and liking some white girl. And once that happened, You know, the narrative changed a little bit. <laughs> on one of the scripts, hold on, one of the scripts for the show, there was a white girl who was going to like Eddie. And she was going to try to make herself more black, have black braids and all this stuff. And basically, this was not what Eddie wanted to do in this way. You know, he didn't want to do it this way. It was already set up in a fashion that wasn't good. It was, and the way they had it, it didn't make any sense to Eddie. Now, it wasn't about the, because she was white. It just wasn't funny. And that's what Eddie's problem was. It was like, look, if we going to do it, make it funny. Because if, if it ain't going to be funny, what the hell are we doing it for? So Eddie wrote it to where it would be funny. Eddie Griffin. He came up with an idea of how to work that angle with the white girl liking Eddie. That wasn't good enough for the studio. They were, no, we don't like it that way. That's just too much. 
satires. And Malcolm didn't, he agreed. He didn't like it either. He was like, see, that's the kind of comedy I want to get away from. You know, the, the, you know, this is what they think all black people minds are like. You know, like we're not civil people. So the show had a balance because of Eddie's wildness and Malcolm's personality. Malcolm Jamal Warner is basically a lot like Theo. They're that same character. They have a lot of those character traits and how they came up through comedy and how they came up through acting and the way he carried himself as a professional. Then you had Eddie, who's just wild. <laughs> who came up rugged and is unapologetic for the way he came up. And he's proud of it. It's what made him what he is. Like he says, I don't tell damn jokes. I'm a comedian. I just talk. And it just happens to be funny. I don't do setups and punchlines. I just talk. And people listen. And they like it. So, when the show was over, everybody was like, they knew this was basically the last season. They weren't going to bring the show back. People were mad, you know, upset, whatever. So, once it was done, and they had the last four people who was writing on the show, and once that was completed, and everybody really wasn't talking to anybody on the show, they went ahead and... Eddie went and did his movie, and he took the idea that he had for the episodes with the white girl and used it for a movie called Undercover Brother. So what they wanted to do when Eddie wrote it and said it would be better if we did it this way, you saw the way in the movie Undercover Brother. <laughs> she devil. <laughs> So you got to see it play out in the way that it did, and I could see why Malcolm wouldn't have wanted that on TV. They didn't want her overly, you know, drooling over Eddie like that. They wanted to make it a little bit more funny and more tasteful, and Eddie wanted to make it as Eddie as possible. So I mean, that was it, man. It was a great show. I like the show. I like the supporting characters, the police officer who also played a supporting role in the later seasons of the Cosby show. You know, she was great. Um, you know, I'm gonna miss that show, man. I, I watched the reruns and I was like, man, this was a pretty good show. You know, to me, I feel you can see the struggle on some of the episodes, but otherwise, I felt like this was one of the best shows that they had on the UPN and that type of network, you know? I can watch Malcolm and Eddie. You know, a lot of those shows were basically, you know, satirish, but I got, I understood what Malcolm Jamal Warner was talking about. You know, like, this was the type of show that could have been a lot better. It could have been, it could have had a run of like how the Cosby show was, you know, two club owners, you know, and going down the process and the road that they were going down. So I'm going to miss it. But anyway, I'm out. Thank you guys for the support. Once again, if you want to donate to the page, you can hit me up on the Cash App or click the Donate button in the description box. I am out.